Hi, welcome to Unprecedented Journey. I'm Jeff Oppenheim, and I'm glad you could be here today. Well, it's a little hard to imagine with all this warm weather that we've been having, at least here in the tri-state area, it's hard to think that we're coming up on that, that great American holiday. You know, when we gather together in great number and we consume like there's no tomorrow. Don't worry, I'm not talking about Thanksgiving. I'm talking about Black Friday. Black Friday, I have to admit, full disclosure, is something I never figured out. Now, at best, it's a time when you prep for the holidays and the gift-giving season. But I have to say, I've never participated in it. I've never actually seen the need or desire for something so bad, so great, that it made me want to get up before the sun even gets up and run out in the cold, stand in line for God knows how long until a store opens and push in with everybody else. Only to find that maybe the item I wanted is either sold out or they've reached their capacity at that price at that time. No, nothing I've really ever needed that bad. And maybe it's because in my travels that I've been lucky enough to do, I've observed certain lines. For example, I was in the Soviet Union. Yes, I do mean the Soviet Union where I saw Russians in Leningrad and in Moscow standing on line. But they were standing on line for food. <laughs> they had no choice. I've also seen in recent travels situations visiting places like Cuba, where because of embargoes, they have a limited supply of goods. And sometimes that causes not only lines, but different workarounds within the system. In my own lifetime, I've seen issues here in this country. I remember when I was a kid, we had a gas crisis, and that required that everyone who needed gas for their car, I remember my stepfather, based on his license plate, I think it was, that you were only allowed to fill up your tank every alternating week. So you not only had to plan ahead and ration your gas, but you also had to plan ahead because the day you went to get gas, you were probably online for the better portion of the day. There went the day, but again, you had no choice. Well, when it gets down to all the craziness and fanfare of running out there and shopping on a Black Friday, I don't know, not my thing. I don't quite want to be that turkey. <laughs> and in fact, I was happy that I was able to instill this even in my kids because they themselves went through, well, my son in particular, and experienced one Black Friday. A neighbor of ours, a friend, asked, I think he asked me originally, but I probably looked at him like he was insane, so he said, well, do you mind if I ask your son? He wanted someone to go with him to the local mega electronic store, I think it was, and he needed someone there so that he could buy more, he could leverage his buying power and buy two of everything, I suppose, and of course he needed someone to help him bring the loot home. He asked my son, he agreed that maybe he would buy him a device of my son's choosing. I think maybe an iPad, I forget. I wonder if even my son remembers to this day. And he also, I think, agreed to pay him a little something for his time, especially helping him carry this stuff home, pushing the cart, pulling the, the trolley or whatever it is that he used to take home. Now, to my son's credit, I have to say he got himself up. Well, I kept a watchful eye and an ear out and made sure at the last moment before he headed out that he was dressed warm enough. But he got himself up, ready, and out the door to meet our neighbor. Well, several hours went by, and uh, eventually, late morning, our son came back into the house, cold and looking very tired, but with a device, a new purchase in hand. And after we warmed him up with a good breakfast, and after he showered and took a little nap, we started to talk to him about what he had experienced and what he thought. I have to say, after sort of a preliminary discussion about the lines and how crowded it was, but people mostly well-behaved, I think that was before the age of trampling each other to death, he started to assess the situation from a very interesting perspective, the finances of it. He took an estimated guess at our friend's salary, if it was hourly. Then he added up all the hours that it would have taken our friend to get up, meet him, get online, shop. Then he added in what his device cost, even at the sale price, and the money that my friend paid him. My son came to the conclusion, though, 
that this probably wasn't that big of a savings for our friend and neighbor. This, in fact, might have been a break-even scenario at best because of all the added costs of his time. Well, I tried to hide the deep smile <laughs> and pride that I was feeling at my son's conclusion. And of course, I had to put it to the test just a little bit further to see if he felt the same way about his purchase and his experience. Now, he still seemed very happy about his new device that he got. And even having the few extra bucks in his pocket, spending money. But when I pressed him, would you do this again? Was it worth it? My son said, no, I don't think I'll ever do this again, Dad. Hooray! But here's the thing I would offer. Since this day is really the day after Thanksgiving, a day of getting together with family, a day of being with loved ones that may actually be a little different this year than it was in years past. There may be people that are not at the table for one reason or another due to COVID. Well, isn't it a day to continue honoring that tradition of giving of oneself? Everyone was in the kitchen preparing, cooking, setting the table. We can extend that energy of self the next day. To those folks who weren't there, get on the phone, especially a Zoom or a video call, a WhatsApp, one of those devices. Call up someone, especially elderly, because a lot of folks may have to stay in isolation during this time. Hey, Uncle Ron. <laughs> How's everything in New Mexico? Here are a few additional things that you can do other than just wait online all day. If you're home with the family, one thing I loved to do all the time with my kids was turn it into an old-fashioned game night. Pictionary is one that is great fun. And another one is Scrabble, especially if you've got older kids, they're gonna love to get into the word play. And you know what? You've got all weekend. You could even start a game of Monopoly. Maybe you'd even have time to finish it, but you know, take one step at a time. Another thing you can do is get a jump start on those holiday cards. We've got Hanukkah and we've got Christmas back to back, and a lot of folks are gonna really feel left out this year because they can't travel because of COVID, all sorts of restrictions and limitations. So this year, I bet you that handwritten note it's going to mean something a whole lot more. Get out a lovely felt tip pen and in your best penmanship, go ahead and put some thoughts to the page and let them know that you're still together, at least by the note. Or, you know, another thing you can do, a lot of people love to take their own photographs and turn them into their own, their very own Christmas cards. So you can use this time when everyone's sitting at home, gathered around, Friday or any time the weekend is the best time to do it. Everybody dress up either in their finest or in their wackiest and get everybody together. Take that picture for your own holiday card. Everybody say cheese. Speaking of photographs, not only do you have to go and take that new photograph that you wanted to take, but you might want to go back and revisit some of the old ones that you have just around the house, lying loose for that rainy day chore that you want to do always, and that's put them into this family scrapbook here. I don't know about you, but it's one of those activities I really enjoy doing, but I never take the time to do it. It seems like I never have the time. Well, what a wonderful opportunity from Black Friday throughout the weekend to sit there and reorganize those family photos, take the extra copies also and send them to friends and family that would like a copy. But just reliving those memories of when we were all traveling and reliving the past at a time when a lot of us are not traveling and the family's going to feel a little disjointed these days. So a great way to remember the holidays together. And another great thing, this is sort of Crafts 101 if you're kind of crafty. And I don't mean on the Martha Stewart sublime level. I mean on well, a pair of scissors, you're kind of handy with them. You can do a wonderful collage of old photographs and old memories. And this makes a great little gift, especially to hand off to the kids or to the grandparents that can't be together with you this year. <laughs> Fond memories. Now I mentioned crafts, 
And again, depending on your level of ability, you might want to get out the drawing pads, some painting, watercolors or such, or some multicolored paper. You can turn that into origami birds that make either great gift wrapping items or even Christmas tree ornaments. If your level is sublime and you really want to engage, especially young ladies in the house, they always love little bead making activities. And all you need are some trinkets. They usually come ready-made, all pre-packed, and a little bit of wire, a little bit of string, and you've got yourself not only an activity for the weekend with kids, but you also have some gifts that can be given around the holiday, especially to grandma. And the other thing you can do either with the whole family there or with friends that are remote on a Zoom session is get together remotely or in person with a little musical session. You can gather around whatever instruments everybody has and make a little noise fest, joyous noise for everybody. Now, if you are still in bed with that special someone lying next to you, keep it a quiet morning. You know, do something that you never take the time to do. I meant reading. <laughs> reading to each other. When was the last time you did that other than the morning headlines once in a while? Pick something great, pick something romantic, pick something playful like a children's story. How about a beautiful sonnet for your love? Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration. Or with your family, if you're getting up, you know what? Pack up those leftovers, which sometimes can be, well, I don't know, met with not too much excitement the next day, but pack them up in a picnic basket and go take a day trip somewhere, even just to your local park, hang out, go somewhere, do something. Or if you don't want to do the picnic, the other thing I like to do with leftovers is make individual containers, as many as you can with the leftovers until they're gone. And you can either take them to maybe a neighbor who's less fortunate, maybe doesn't cook for themselves and doesn't have anyone looking out for them. Well, the other thing that I'm gonna do this year is I've gotten to know quite a number of the homeless. There's even more in my neighborhood now than ever before. And I'm gonna go out and the ones that I'm familiar with, give them a wonderful turkey dinner. What I'm saying really is this is a chance where you can give of yourself. You can consume love. You can consume friendship. But measure whether you really need or someone else needs those things that we think we need more. These are just a few ideas. Playful, fun, easy to do. Until the next time, thanks for joining me, Jeff Oppenheim, on an Unprecedented Journey. And thanks for joining and hanging with my friend here. Cheers. <laughs>